administra uh, administrator of SBA. Thank you very much, Chairwoman Velasquez, Chairman Frank, and members of both committees. Small businesses continue to have problems getting access to capital. This is a situation that must be fixed. Small businesses create 65% of the net new jobs over the past 15 years, so we need a robust small business jobs plan that addresses these credit gaps. We've already taken an important step forward. I want to thank Congress for passing the Recovery Act and for the extension of the 90% guarantee and reduced fee provisions. Over the past year, we've been able to leverage $500 million in taxpayer dollars into more than $20 billion in the hands of small businesses. We've also brought more than 1,000 lenders who hadn't made an SBA loan since 2007 back to SBA lending. Compared to the weeks before the Recovery Act, this is a weekly volume increase of more than 90 percent. And we have a slide up there to illustrate this. But we need to do more. For our small business jobs plan, we've analyzed the gaps in the current small business lending market, and we've constructed proposals that address the most critical problems. We're guided by three principles. Build on what works, maximize limited taxpayer dollars, make targeted changes as quickly as possible. Our plan has five key components. First, for community banks that don't have capital to lend, we need the small business lending fund that you've just heard described. Second, for banks that have capital but are still having trouble taking the risk, we've asked Congress for an extension of the 90% guarantee and the reduced fees through September. Those funds ran out at the beginning of this week. Already there are 370 loans for more than $140 million in our queue. Third, for small businesses that need bigger SBA loans to create jobs, franchisees, manufacturers, and exporters, we want to increase our top loan limits from $2 million to $5 million. And there's a slide on that. Fourth, for businesses that can't find access to working capital, they've had their credit lines pulled, we need to temporarily raise SBA express loan limits to $1 million. And there's a slide on that as well. And these are in your packages. And fifth, for owner-occupied real estate of small businesses whose commercial real estate mortgages need to be refinanced, we need to open up our 504 program. Finally, we know that the chairwoman and others have asked us to look at direct lending. We spent a lot of time working on this, and we found several important concerns and unintended consequences. We currently have 75,000 branches of making SBA loans. Duplicating their reach would require significant new SBA staff, and training and hiring this workforce would take too long. The approach is costly and would increase the subsidy cost from one cent to 15 cent per dollar of lending, and we'd be competing with and even replacing the private lenders who have now ramped up our SBA lending, including the 1,100 banks we've gotten back. The problem we are trying to solve is not that small businesses need direct loans. It is that they need direct access to banks that are making loans with our 90% guarantee and direct access to counselors that can help them get credit worthy. We today are providing everyone here with some information that should help in that matter. These are going to be the names and numbers of SBA lenders in your state or area and our counselors in your area so that you can help refer those who come to you and give them direct access to these programs that are working. Again, the principles of these proposals are to build on what works, to maximize limited taxpayer dollars, and to make the targeted changes as quickly as possible. We are confident that these actions, with these actions, we can move to fill the credit gaps and meet the needs of America's small businesses. Thank you.